In this video, we're going to look more at the polar coordinate system. Now that we have two coordinate systems to identify a point in the plane, we need to be able to convert between them. Suppose that a point P in the plane can be represented by rectangular coordinates x, y, and as polar coordinates r, theta. Then this point would live on one of the vertices of a right triangle. We could identify the sides of the triangle as having length x and y and hypotenuse r. Then, using the fact that it's a right triangle, the cosine of theta would be the adjacent side x over the hypotenuse, so that we could write x as r cosine theta. Similarly, we know the sine of theta would be the opposite side y over the hypotenuse, so that y is equal to r sine theta. We also know that since this is a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem applies, and x squared plus y squared would be r squared. And to find the angle, knowing the x and y dimensions, or the sides of the triangle, we could use the tangent function. Let's look at some examples. Let's convert each of the points in rectangular coordinates to a point in polar coordinates with r greater than 0 and theta on the interval 0 to 2 pi. This first one, 3, negative 3. I imagine drawing that, and that would live in the fourth quadrant. It'd be about right here. And it would live on a right triangle. And the point here would be three units to the right, and then three units down. First, let's determine what the radius is, the r value. We know by the Pythagorean theorem that r squared is 3 squared plus negative 3 squared. So that r squared is 18 or r is the square root of 18, which we can simplify as 3 square roots of 2. To determine our angle theta of rotation, we know that the tangent of theta would be y over x, so that the tangent of theta is negative 1. And remember from our unit circle, when you're in the fourth quadrant and you want your tangent to be negative 1, this occurs when theta is 7 pi over 4. So our point in the polar coordinate system could be written as 3 square root of 2, 7 pi over 4. Let's look at the second one now. The point negative 3, 4. And let's first draw where that would live in the coordinate system. Negative 3, 4 would live in the second quadrant. It would be up here. And it would live on a right triangle. It would be 3 units to the left and 4 units up. And our radius would be here. By the Pythagorean theorem, we know that r squared is... 4 squared plus the negative 3 squared. So that r squared is 16 plus 9 is 25. And so rr has to be 5. To determine our angle theta, we know that the tangent of theta would be 4 over negative 3. This is not one that we recognize from our unit circle, so we know that theta would be the inverse tangent of negative four-thirds. Now, using our calculator, this would give us a value of approximately negative 0.92. This does not live on the interval 0 to 2 pi. 
uh, negative 0.92 would actually live about down here in the fourth quadrant. And so to get an angle on the interval 0 to 2 pi, let's add a rotation of pi to this to get us back into the second quadrant. This would give our angle theta to be about 2.21. And our point in polar coordinates would be the point 5, 2.21. Let's look at the last example here, the point zero 0.03. Now, the point zero 0.03, that would live three units up on the y-axis. And so its distance away from the origin would be three. So our radius is three. The angle theta, well, because it's on the y-axis, would have to be pi over two. And so our point, 0, 3, in the polar coordinate system would be represented as 3 pi over 2. Let's look at some examples going the other way now. Now let's look at some examples where we can take a point given in polar coordinates and rewrite it as a point in rectangular coordinates. You don't have to draw the picture to do this, but I like to visualize where this point lives. So I'm going to draw the picture first. And say that the point 2 pi over 3 would be a pi over 3 rotation. Um, it would be on this line right here, a length of 2, a distance of 2 away from the origin. And it would live on a right triangle with dimensions of or the lengths of x and y. Okay, well we know that x can be written as r cosine theta, which will be 2 cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 we know is 1 half. And so we get an x coordinate of 1. Similarly, we know y is done by looking at r sine theta, which would be 2 sine of pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 we know is square root 3 over 2. So this comes out to be just square root of 3. And so this point in the rectangular coordinate system can be written as 1 square root of 3. Let's look at our second example here. Negative 4, 5 pi over 6. Now recall this point with a rotation of 5 pi over 6 would be, well, 5 pi over 6 lives in the second quadrant. It's over here. But the negative radius is going to reflect our point across the origin. It's going to be down here. So our second point would be right here. It would have some x coordinate and some y coordinate. And we would know that x is going to be found by looking at, well, r cosine theta, so negative 4 cosine of 5 pi over 6. And the cosine of 5 pi over 6 we know is root 3 over 2. Well, negative root 3 over 2. And so the x value of our coordinate is going to be at, you know, the, the minus signs would cancel and the 4s would cancel. I think it would come up to be a, a 2 square root of 3. Similarly, our y value would be negative 4 sine of 5 pi over 6. The sine of pi, 5 pi over 6 we know is 1 half. 
and this is going to come out to be negative 2. And so our point in the rectangular coordinate system would be the point 2 root 3, negative 2. For the last example here, again, let's draw this 9 pi over 2. Now, 9 pi over 2 would be, well, the, rate, the, the, the angle of rotation would be pi over 2. It would, it would live on the positive y-axis, 9 units up from the origin. Well, this one we can do, we, we, we know this one already. This would be the coordinates 0, 9. Well, I hope this video was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.